Guess what, Joel? It's the last week of the Big Drama Show? It's the... Wait, how did you know? Mr. Jacob said so last week. Oh, and here I thought I could surprise you. Not this time. Shall we join them? Yeah! Artie, hey. What's up, Laura? I know you're busy seating people for the show, but I need help. I can't right now, Laura. I'm sorry. My, my grandma has come for the show, and I need to help her with her oxygen tank. Oh, okay. Say hi for me. Whoa, look at this mess. Oh, hey, Gabby. Yeah, I was taking all these scripts back to the green room, and they all fell off the cart and got everywhere. Need help cleaning up? You have time? Sure. I'm not doing anything. Great. I've got to put the script for today's show on the stands. You got this? I think I'll manage. All right. Thanks. Anyone backstage? Hello? Hey, Mr. Jacobs. It's Gabby. Over. Hey, Gabby. I have to start the show, and Sam hasn't gotten here to run spotlighting for the opening. You want to come to the back of the house and do that for me real quick? Yeah, that sounds really fun. Be right there. I'm here, Laura. You still need help? Hello? Whoa, that's a lot of papers on the floor. If I had to guess, she needed help with these. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third and final of this year's drama shows. With the money we've raised from these three events, we will be able to bless missionaries all over the world and the communities they serve. Thank you for your generosity. And without further ado, let's start the show off with one of our favorite programs. And now, from the garage of Lionel Jacobs comes the uplifting drama, The Two Balloons, an adapted biblical teaching about love. Once upon a time, in a small town in the middle of nowhere, there were two friends, Dan and Brad. We're the main characters. Don't you think they know that? They might need things spelled out for them. These two friends got along like brothers, which from time to time meant they erred on the competitive side of things. My watermelon is redder than yours. It is not. It is too. See? Oh, yeah. One day, a car pulled up. Oh. Can I help you? Good morning. I was just going to staple this flyer to the telephone pole here in front of your house, if that's okay. It's advertising the hot air balloon competition happening next month. Hey, Brad, what's going on? This lady chose the telephone pole in front of my house to hang her poster. Something about a balloon show. It's more than a show. It's a competition. Entrants get points for size, creative design, and theme. Then, whoever has the most points at the end wins the grand prize. Both of the friends looked at each other for a moment and immediately ran to their garages. Uh, okay, bye. <laughs> All right, time to get designing. Okay, I need a basket and some rope. I'm thinking it will be the shape of a house. Kind of like an upside down version of that one movie with uh, the old guy. What color should my balloon be? Eh, I'll figure that out later. They both worked long and hard on their balloons. And on the day of the competition, they brought out their creations. Hey, Dan, where's your balloon? Oh, I've got it in the trunk. It won't take long to set up. Where's yours? Getting unloaded as we speak. That's good, Charlie. Dump it right there. That's huge. You're looking at 9,000 square yards of nylon right there, my friend. 27 miles of thread, and wait until you see the basket. Ah! Hello again, boys. The conditions are perfect today. Why don't you start inflating your craft so the judging can begin? Right away. Inflate? Yeah, you know, fill it up with hot air. It would seem that in his rush to have the biggest, the most creative, and most fun-themed balloon in the contest, Brad had forgotten the very thing that makes a hot air balloon work. Hey, uh, Dan, you wouldn't happen to have an extra burner, would you? Why would I have an extra burner? I only need one. Yeah. Brad watched sadly as the other balloons took shape around the limp form of his huge nylon bag. The judges shook their heads at the sad sight. They got out their clipboards and... Wait, here Brad, you can use my burner. But what about your balloon? Eh, I'm not gonna win with it anyways. Might as well help you out. Hmm, alternate ending. I like it. And so, with Dan's burner, Brad's hot air balloon rose from the ground. Its colossal form blotted out the sun, and the judges quickly scribbled in their notebooks. That's a winner if I ever saw one. Which one of you is responsible for this piece of art? 
That would be Dan. He's the real winner. The moral is that as Christians, we often try to serve God doing all sorts of things. We can lead worship, teach others, or know all there is to know about the Bible. We can perform miracles and have mountain-moving faith, but in the end, if we have all of these things and don't have love for God and the people around us, our hard work and achievements can be as useless as a balloon without a burner. And now, from the garage of Lionel Jacobs comes the interstellar drama, The Flight of the Pisces, an adapted biblical teaching about the Holy Spirit. Once upon a future, in the far reaches of space, there was a starport. If you have a spaceship that needs repairs, upgrades, or fuel, this is your go-to one-stop shop. Mainly because this is the only starport for light years around, but they have a great selection too. Captain Andromeda, fancy seeing you here? Cassiopeia, good to see you. Yeah, how's the old Pisces treating you? Can't complain, she's a good ship, and though the computer is a little faulty, we haven't had too much trouble. So, you're in the market for a new computer? You'll want to stop by Omega's Automations then. They're giving away free computers, part of the new edict from the Tri-Union. I'll have to check it out, thanks Cassie. Take care, Andy. And so Andy went to get his very own free computer. Ah, welcome to Omega's. You're probably here for your Alpha N, am I right? Maybe. I was told that there are free computers here. You heard right. These babies are lifesavers, let me tell you. I've been in some pretty rough situations, and if I didn't have one of these bad boys installed, well, let me tell you, I wouldn't be standing here today. That's for sure. Great. So, how do I get this installed, and what's the hidden fee? Hidden fee? You're kidding, right? Don't you know anything about post-scarcity economics? As for installation, we do all of that for you. Beginning to end, that's the Alpha N from Omega Guarantee. Great! My ship is the Pisces at Dock 5. Splendid! Thanks for coming. Oh, and be sure to tell your friends. Not long after this visit to the starport, Captain Andy took a job hauling space lettuce to a nearby space rabbit farm. Space bunnies gotta eat too. Usually this would be a simple matter. But on the star date of our story, a giant black hole erupted in the path of the Pisces. Captain Andy was too busy counting the crates of lettuce to see the danger ahead. And by the time he got back to the controls, he and his ship were in big trouble. Computer, what's going on? As the narrator said, we are headed into the gravity well of a black hole. As you may know, black holes are objects in space that have so much gravity, nothing can escape them. Not even light. That's not good. Well, let's see if I can break us free. Captain Andy charged up all the engines and turned his ship away from the anomaly. But no matter how much he fought, the ship still was slowly getting dragged further and further into the black hole's grip. If we do not do something soon, the ship will be lost and all cargo and crew with her. Not helping, computer. All seemed hopeless, until Andy remembered something. You were right, these babies are lifesavers, let me tell you. I've been in some pretty rough situations, and if I didn't have one of these bad boys installed, well... Let me tell you, I wouldn't be standing here today, that's for sure. And he flipped the switch for automatic pilot, and the computer roared with calculations. It plotted a new course, and within seconds, the Pisces and her crew and cargo were safely back on track to the Star Rabbit Farm, with an extra hour to spare. Wow. Thanks, computer. I couldn't have done it without you. I know. Do you want to drive, or shall I? Alpha, take the wheel. Taking the wheel, sir. The moral is that when we try to live for God, we often think that we can do it by ourselves. The truth is, there are many ways for us to end up trapped in all kinds of sins and bad thoughts, and it can be impossible to get out on our own. Of course, God knows this, and He made a way out. Not only that, but He gives us His Spirit to help guide us and save us from our own weakness. In fact, when we rely on His power instead of our own, that's when we can truly do the impossible. And that, as they say, is a wrap. Thank you all so much for coming, and remember to come back next year for another great show. Whew. 
And just like that, another drama show is done for the year. Yeah. See you next year, drama show. It was fun. Oh, by the way, Gabby, thanks for cleaning up those scripts before the show. Scripts? Yeah. Remember the Carter scripts that got spilled all over back there? I needed help, and you said you would take care of it? Oh, those. Yeah, I didn't pick those up, Laura. Mr. Jacobs had me run Spotlight until Sam got here. But if you didn't, then who did? Great job, kids. I'm pretty sure the show gets better every year. Who's ready for some after-show ice cream? In a minute, Mr. Jacobs. We have a mystery to solve. A mystery, huh? Ooh, must be pretty important to delay ice cream. Delay ice cream? Yeah. I mean, if I didn't clean this up, and Gabby didn't, who did? I mean, it could have been anyone. There were a lot of us in the show. Yeah. Wait, did you clean this up, Artie? I thought you said you couldn't. I thought I couldn't, but Grandma was feeling pretty good today, so helping her didn't take as long as I thought, and since I had the time, I figured I'd help clean up after all. <laughs> then why didn't you say you did right away? A lot of time could have been saved if you just took credit for it. I guess, but I didn't do it to get credit. It was the right thing to do. What? That doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't you want credit for doing something good? Actually, according to passages like in Matthew 6, it makes perfect sense, Gabby. Okay, and those verses say? <laughs> you don't know? Come on, Mr. Jacobs. Don't make us guess. Remember, ice cream. All right. Verses like these tell us that when we do something good, we shouldn't do it to be seen by other people. Instead, we should do it secretly. Not only does this mean that we stay humble, but it also means that God will reward us because we opted out of being rewarded by people. I mean, I wasn't really thinking about getting rewarded anyway. It was just the right thing to do. Can't get out of it, I'm afraid. But besides being rewarded, there's an even better reason to not announce when we're doing good things. In John 7, 18, God tells us that when we don't take credit for good things we do, but instead give God all the credit, they realize that the reasons you do good things must be real and powerful. And it's much easier to believe you when you tell them how to follow God. That is more important. Yeah. So, speaking of rewards and important things, ice cream? <laughs> all right, guys. Let me wrap things up with the others, and I'll meet you at the ice cream shop. You got it. You coming, Artie? Oh, yeah. Just turning off the radio.